Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In today's video, we're going to be talking about solids, liquids, and gases. So we're going to start by asking the question, what is matter? We're going to then look at the particle model of matter and some of the scientific kind of principles around that. We're going to look at the three main states of matter, and that is then we're going to look at some of the properties of these three main states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases. All right, let's get started. The first question that we want to pose is, what is matter? When we're talking about states of matter, we need to know exactly what we're putting into that box of matter. And so, you know, in a really broad sense, um, scientists put everything in the universe into one of two categories, either matter or energy. And so then it, it, then it becomes a question of, well, how do we decide whether something fits into matter or energy? And so there's two kind of uh, particular aspects that scientists use or, or features that matter has. Matter has mass and matter takes up space. That is, to be more precise, matter has volume. So anything that has mass and has volume is considered to be matter. If it doesn't have mass and it doesn't have volume, then it fits into the category of energy. Now, as I said before, this is a bit of a simplistic um, way to be thinking about things, but it's an important starting point for us to work out what things belong into this box. But so then if for those things that have mass and have volume and then therefore fit into matter, well, how do we think about what they are like and how they are made? Well, scientists have described matter by what we refer to as the particle model. It's a way of thinking about all of the, the matter that we interact with, the things that we can touch and taste and, and see in our everyday lives, but to understand, well, how is it built at the, the smallest possible level that we can think of? Now, we can't see down at this level, but we can still uh, think about some of its properties and characteristics so we can better understand it. The first principle is that all matter is made up of tiny particles that are far too small to see that everything can be reduced down to a level at which it's made up of these small particles. These particles are constantly moving. They're, that movement can be vibration, it can be moving from one place to another, but constant motion is a key feature of what these particles are like. Now we think of them at this stage as spheres, but we draw them in diagrams and such as simple circles. Now we can recognize that particles themselves are made up of the much more um, complex pieces or that, that at the moment we're thinking very basic, but it's important for us to start at this point so that then we can add further information down the track as we learn it and as we um, come to understand it. And so that this matter, these the substances that are made up of these tiny particles have properties. Now what we mean by properties is, you know, what something is like or how it behaves. And properties are usually something we can see or observe happening with our own eyes or our senses. You know, so whether something is hard or soft, whether it's brittle or whether it's flexible, um, whether it's strong or weak, what its melting point and boiling point are like, these are properties that matter has, that we can measure, that we can observe, we can see. And so that then what we seek to understand is why does it have these properties and how does it relate to its particles? And so then the next steps that we have is, well, what are the particles themselves made of? Um, that's a question for a little bit further down the line in our understanding. And so the three main states of matter that we concern ourselves with at the start, these, this is unlikely to be new to you, are solid, liquid, and gas. We can see a simple kind of particle representation here, um, drawing them as simple circles, although they're shaded a little bit like spheres for a bit of extra visual detail. But so they, these are the three main ones you've probably heard before and the main ones we're going to talk about today. But it is important for us to recognize that other states of matter do exist in the universe. For example, plasma is one you may have heard of. Um, and there's all the other much more complex or nuanced states that scientists can talk about. But for, it's important for us to start at this point, a solid, liquid and gas. So we said that matter has properties. Well, what are the properties of solids, liquids, and gases? That's what we want to start with now. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to, in a moment, I want you to pause and I want you to set up a table that looks like this um, if you're taking notes. Um, and you can see some of the properties that we're going to be looking at down the side, looking at bonding. How are the particles um, connected with each other? And what are those that's like? Uh, how are they arranged? relative to one another? How much uh, space might there be between particles? And can this 
state of matter be compressed and can it flow? So pause the video now in order to be able to set up this table. And then when you're ready, get back into it. So now we're going to start thinking about solids. Well, so solids have strong forces of attraction between their particles. That is, that's what we're talking about with the bonding. How much are those particles interacting with each other? And that attraction between them is very strong in a solid. The particle arrangement is what we call regular or ordered is perhaps a better way to refer to it. That is, we've got regular 3D patterns and rows and, and, and structures that have a, a, a regularity to it, a consistency to it. The particles themselves are touching one another, that they're very, very close together. Um, but solids, we say, cannot be compressed and cannot flow, except the, the, un, the what we would say for a solid if it's really finely divided. You take a, a lump of sugar and you break it into lots of smaller pieces of sugar, and we can make those pieces flow, but the solid in and of itself doesn't actually flow at the particle level. It's just we might break a big chunk into small enough chunks that it kind of feels like it. Whereas when we look at a liquid, we see medium forces of attraction between the particles. Not as strong as in a solid, but there's still something there. But the particle arrangement is what we would call random. That is not in this ordered regular pattern, rows and columns and 3D structures, but rather they're kind of just jostling in next to one another in whatever container that you put it in, or whether you just pour something onto, the, onto a surface like the table, and we see that it kind of takes up a random arrangement. But the particles themselves are still touching each other, so they're still close together, but they're just not locked into that 3D ordered arrangement. We still can't compress a liquid because when we're compressing something, we are trying to reduce the space between the particles, but those particles are already touching. They're about as close together as they can already be. But as you can well experience every time you drink from a water bottle or things like that, that liquids can flow, that we can pour them from one place to another, from one container to another. And finally, we get down to gas, that gases have weak to little to no forces of attraction between their particles, that the spaces between those particles are so large that those forces of attraction are next to nothing. But the particle arrangement is random because those particles are constantly moving around inside a container and, and the, where we would find them is, is essentially random. There are very large gaps between particles, much, much larger than the particles themselves. Um, that is, gases are mostly space, if you want to think of it in that way, with particles that are moving constantly in and around each other, but often not um, interacting at all that gases can be compressed because there is so much space between those particles and we can make gases flow. Now, although what we think about flowing in this situation sometimes looks a little different, um, but it's, it is still able to make it change its shape and move from one place to another um, because we're making those particles move. Okay, so what we looked at in our video, it says overview, but we mean a recap. We looked at this idea of what is matter um, we're helping to decide between matter and energy. We're saying that the things that fit into being matter are um, described as being made of these particles, and we talked about some of their features. We identify the three main states of matter that we're initially concerned with, knowing that there are plenty of others out there we can learn about if we choose. And we looked at some of the properties of these three main states of matter, solids, liquids, and gases, thinking about their bonding, thinking about their structures, and then thinking about some of the properties that they have. All right, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye for now.